Dear friends in Christ, I welcome you to another edition of our Sunday Reflections on this fourth Sunday of Lent. The fourth Sunday of Lent is typically called Lectare, that is rejoice, because it is the opening antiphor of the Eucharistic liturgy that invites us to joy. The antiphor says, Rejoice Jerusalem, thus it is a call to joy. But what is the reason for this joy, dear friends? The reason, as the Gospel reading tells us, is because for God so loved the world that He gave His only Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 3, 16. We therefore rejoice knowing that God does not abandon us, but it avenes when the situation seems desperate. God it avenes when we are losing hope. God it avenes offering man salvation and joy. God does not remain apart from us, but enters our history and mixes with us. When God mixes with men, great things happen. It is this knowledge that God is coming to mix with us that we are assured of great things that is the reason of our joy. The central theme for today's liturgy, for which I invite us to reflect briefly, is the richness of God's mercy. God is rich in mercy, diverse in misericordia. Lent is a period to reflect on the richness of God's mercy and take advantage of His mercy with Scripture, even in the second reading of today tells us that God's mercy is so abundant and His love for us is so great that He brought us to life while we were still spiritually dead in disobedience. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4. The book of Lamentations chapter 3, 22 to 23 tells us that the steadfast love of God never ceases and His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning and great is the faithfulness of God. As St. Peter tells us, to think and reflect on God's patience and His mercy as an opportunity for us to be saved. The character of God is mercy. God is always desirous of saving His people. That is the reason for Him coming into the world. God entered into the world to scatter the darkness of sin and to bring men into the reign of eternal light. St. John in the Gospel reading of today decries the sad paradox of God and His people. He says that the light came into the world, but people prefer darkness to light. God always comes through for His people time and again, bringing a beacon of light and hope. But people keep preferring darkness to light. This is the sad history of man. In the first reading of today from the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 36, 14 to 23, we read a similar story of how, of how God does not give up on his people, despite man's failure to choose him. The passage tells us of how the elders of the priesthood and the people added infidelity to infidelity, copying all the shameful practices of the nations and defiling the temple that the Lord had consecrated for himself in Jerusalem. But the Lord kept tirelessly sending them messenger after messenger. Since he wished to spare his people, the people even burnt down the temple of God, demolished the walls of Jerusalem and set fire to all the palaces and destroyed everything of value in it. The story of the people of Israel, dear friends, during the reign of Israel's first king, Saul, is a prototype of our history. The sinfulness of the people made them lose their temple and their homeland. Sin has, sin has made us believers lose our heritage. Sin has made us fallen from the glory of God. Scripture tells us for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Prophet Isaiah says it well in Isaiah 59, verse 1 to 2. He says, Your iniquities have separated you from God, and your sins have hidden his face from you, so that he will not hear. The reason these people destroyed the temple of God is because they valued their own self-confidence and thought they can do without God. To claim absolute freedom from God is to choose self-destruction. To value our own self-confidence and think we can do without God is to be steep on destruction. Through biblical history, each time man chooses self-confidence, he always brings destruction unto himself. In Genesis 11, the story of the Tower of Babel, the beginning of destruction was when they said to themselves, Let us build for ourselves a city, let us make a name for ourselves. Genesis 11 verse 4. The more we rely on our minds, 
the more we are steep on self-destruction. Sin begins when we reject God and choose rather the world and ourselves. But the word of scripture tells us, cut off from him, we can do nothing. John 15 verse 5. There are many times we have cut, from God, cut off from God and that is why we could do nothing. When we cut off from God, we will only be moving in circles and groping in darkness. Sometimes when we find darkness, it is the clearest evidence that God is far. And we must go in search of God. God came into the world, but the world prefers darkness. Darkness, in this sense, is the absence of God. It is metaphoric of a state of dryness and struggle, a state of sin. We choose darkness each time we trust God less and trust in our strength. We choose darkness each time we abandon the confessional. We choose darkness when we abandon our daily discipline of prayer. We choose darkness when we trust our abilities than the grace and mercy of God. We choose darkness when we compromise the truth, tell half truth and convolute the truth. We choose darkness when we sometimes choose leaders who are incompetent over those who are competent and sacrificial. Many times we choose darkness over light. Friends, God's grace is sufficient for us. Let us choose God. We will find light in our world again. Friends, let us walk anew in the light of God. God does not abandon us. And that is the reason for our joy. The first reading ends that God sent Cyprus king of Persia to rebuild the temple and the people. And that is the richness of God's mercy. God never gives up on his people. God has not given up on us. This land, God has opened again the windows of his mercy to us so that we can be saved. Let us choose God and live by the truth. St. John says in the ending of the gospel reading of the reading that the man who lives by the truth comes into the light. Let us pray. May God who is rich in mercy bring the light of his grace upon us, grant us the strength, strength, courage and enablement to turn away from darkness into the glorious freedom of his eternal light. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.